Hey everyone, um, we're gonna texture this barrel now. So just before I start, let me just show you what I did here. So I'm going into edit mode. I've added. You've already know how to do this in the, the other video. So I've had some uh, edge creases here, uh, and I kind of uh, I went to my smooth shader. Let me just go back here. It was shade flat. So that's what it was before, and I did this smooth shade smooth, and then I added uh, in those uh, edge loops there. I came here and I said, um, uh, hold on a minute, edge crease. Yeah, and I, I put here edge crease to make it sharper in those areas, right? Uh, all these pink ones. Uh, so if I come back here, yeah, and then I click the auto smooth here, you see, because if I just put a smooth, it's going to be like that, which we don't want it. So uh, we click the out smooth and then we decide uh, which angle that you start smoothing and not smoothing. So you can decide here and I kind of stop here. I thought I was happy there something like this I think I can actually improve this guy so if I could just edge uh, edge crease yeah let's have a look anyway kind of something like this yeah just to look a little bit more realistic I didn't want to see all the faces on the on the vertical line the other thing I did as well I prepared a three-point lighting so I have an area light here with a rectangle it's an area light it means that you can decide which shape is emitting light so I use a rectangle light and I hear you can control the size of rectangle light I just put three three there as we did in the last lesson with the power 1600 and the backlight of 4000. So I didn't like, uh, I'm actually gonna um, keep good practice, key light, and this one is the fill light. So keep remaining, renaming fill light. Con I can't be doing things and talking at the same time, it's just crazy. Uh, but like, I'm getting used to it now to record videos. There you go. And that's my camera there. So that's, I also position my camera. So I have some lighting set up and my camera set up. So I now do the texturing and then we can just render, right? So that's what we're going to do. And we're going to go to our UV editing. So the UV editing, so this is your UV editor, which means apply a, a 2D texture into 3D space. So the way it works is like if I come down here, so select my object and I go to my UV maps, uh, it's, there is already a UV map when you create um, objects here from when you add shapes and stuff it comes with its own uv map layout and then we start deforming things and then we need to redo this uv map so how do i see this uh i can see hold on a it disappeared now view let me just see if i can select Oh, I'm selecting the thing. Uh, right, let me just do, go on my edit mode. Oh, yeah, I need to be in edit mode. So that's my barrel there. And in order for me to see that UV, I need to click this arrow here, which is syncs the UV information. So this is, UV means like you kind of, imagine this is a bar of chocolate and then the UV is the packaging. So you open the packaging and lay it out flat. That's what it is. Uh, right, I hope that, that explains a little bit more, better. Okay, there you go. This is the UV we have, right? Uh, which we don't want that. Because um, the texture is not gonna uh, apply in the way we want in that way. It could be deforming. I just wanted to show you how we can uh, UV this object, right? 
Okay, so what I'm going to do, I'm going to delete that one. I'm going to create a new UV. So I'm going to go here and select, uh, let's say, you have to decide where you want the seam. Yeah, normally I put the seam at the back of your object, a place where you can't see, uh, you know, where there's the joint that you don't really want to see. Sometimes it can be perfect, sometimes not, but you know, it's not a big deal. Uh, so I'm going to decide that my seam, I'm going to de detach this in the middle here. See what happened here, I created this top bit here, and at the bottom I didn't pay attention, and it was not actually matching in the same place, but it doesn't matter, I'm just going to do this. So this is kind of this is the place where I'm going to unwrap. So to unwrap in Blender, which is again different from my other software, so that's why it's a little bit of a nightmare. Uh, I'm going to create mark a seam. So I created the seam. Yeah, it's the red line, which means that I'm going to. Uh, I don't want that bit. Clear seam. Well, at the bottom, we're not going to see much anyway, so I'm not really bothered. There you go. That's what we're going to do. And from this, I need to, I think I need to select it all. Sometimes in many, UV mapping is a time consuming thing. It's not going to be always like this, that you just unwrap things and everything is fine. Now you many, many objects, you're going to be selecting different areas and unwrap them separately. And, uh, yeah, so this one is, we're going to unwrap in one go, just for you to see how you can apply detection and how it works. Uh, this is a zero one one information here. And uh, UV is kind of work XY, is, is, is equivalent to XY. So you want your, your UVs fit into that one area. And the bigger the, them fitting inside here, the better and more resolution for your texture so we want to occupy the maximum space inside here so now I've created my seam I select it so I'm gonna use a cube projection boom and I just see I came to UV and I use a cube projection so it means projection in kind of a U box area around imagine this is inside the box and it's projecting from all the sides um, this is an easy way to do it, uh, and as you can see, it's all messed up. The OVs all on the top of each other. We don't want that. Sometimes there will be air times that we want UV overlapping, but in this case, we don't. Uh, when we come to other tutorials, I shall I tell you uh, when it comes, and so we don't get confused. Um, so what I'm going to do, I want to lay down this UVs nicely inside my 0, 1 UV area. So I'm going to come here and pack island, let's see. And then Blender, figure out how we can fit this nicely. So how does that work? I mean, if you come here and you select this, these faces, this is equivalent to those faces there, right? So same thing if I come here and where is it? let's see if I select all of it yeah so my two sizes are that top and the bottom here right and what is this area so if you want to see which area it is you can see there there are many ways you can do apply textures and so on right so we've got that got our UVs, I tend to also export our UV layout and I call it um, Metal Burrow UVs. You know, this is one thing you can do, so you can bring this UV to Photoshop and maybe paint things on it and bring it back because you have the UV information. So, export. What, so now we're going to apply a texture. If I open my, if I'm going to show you my Photoshop here, so you get inside my video area, I think that, oh, that's not, oh, yeah, it's fitting my video area here. Uh, we don't want that one. We're going to apply this texture, which is the metal texture. Um, 
if I go to my image size in my Photoshop, it says 124 by 24. That's what we called our 1K map, right? It's important that you work um, on uh, square images, square textures. So 1K map is 1024 by 1024, 2K 248 by 2048 and 4K map 4096. So the bigger, obviously, the larger the file. Uh, but also the better resolution. I'm going to use a 1K map for this, and you really, when you're doing your game, you have to decide depending how close you are. And again, the same thing as the high poly, low poly. You know, sometimes you might even even use a, uh, a 512 by 512 if it's an unimportant object somewhere there at the back. Yeah, so I'm going to use a 1K map for this. And uh, so now I'm going to go to my shading. So you can see I've got my lighting set up, I've got my environmental texture here. Um, let's have a look at the render. If I render my image now, yeah, it's okay. It's there's the light information is there and it's just white because there's no texture. So let's create the material first. So I'll come here and I'm gonna select. I'm going to create a new material. New material. So when I create a new material, as you know in the, from the last video, we have this information here in the shading area. This is my shader, the principal is BSDF, which I have no idea what it stands for. But this is our shader, and that's our material output. And now we're going to create a node. I'm not going to create from here. I'm going to show you from here, so we can learn uh, new things. Texture, I'm going to put my create my image texture here. And I'm going to open that texture, which is my metal color. I'm going to tell you a little bit about the other, other textures in a minute. Open image, right? And I want this texture to be connected to the this is my color texture to connect the color to my base color. So it's the same as when we applied here. See, you see, apply there. And you can see here, boom, you apply my texture there. It's looking quite good. And, uh, you know, that's the information of the UV. is looking all right. Okay. The other thing I want to add, this is not ideal yet. I mean, if I render this, let's have a look. Uh, it's here, right? Yeah, that's it. Okay. Mm -hmm. Apply the text. That's just that the color information. As you can see here, this is a rusty thing, and he is so bright and so um, it's just very smooth. Everything is super smooth. We don't want that. So we want there's something. Uh, we're gonna add some bumpiness, this bumpy feel to it, this kind of rough feel. So if I come back to my Photoshop here, I show you. Uh, I've already download this uh, ready-made. A texture, yes. Yeah? So, um, this is a displacement texture. We're not going to be using this today, but I wanted to, under to, sh to show you that this is tells in with the grayscale where uh, the level of displacement goes in and out. This is also related to bumpiness, but the displacement is actually displaced the actual object, uh, our mesh. This is our normal texture, which we're going to use now. So, you can see here. You see, you see these areas of the texture that will kind of emboss, let's say. It's going to, uh, I'll show you anyway, I can't explain. So I have two different types of normal here, I don't know why. Uh, and then we have the roughness. You see, as you saw before, the roughness, it tells the object, the, the material, what parts are more glossy and or less glossy, more, more the rough areas and less rough areas. So we're going to use that one as well. But we're going to use the color. We're going to use the normal for now and the roughness. OK, let's go back to Blender. Blender, there you go. So we're going to create a new texture, which is an image texture. There you go. And I'm going to open my normal texture. 
open image. This is my normal. So the normal texture is not about color. So I put here that uh, color space, I just put non-color. This is not about color. We're not looking for color. And I'm going to connect this to my normal texture, but I need a normal map first. Yeah. I think if I come here and then do this, it's just not going to look right. It's something not, not working properly. So I need to, to to tell Blender it needs a normal map. It's a normal map first. So at the moment, I only have a normal texture. So I need a normal mode, normal mat, normal map node in order to tell, to put all my shader on the normal of my shader, right? I hope it makes sense. If it doesn't, just, you know, keep doing it because you, it happens automatically after you do it a few times. So I have a normal map node. So I need to connect this information here of my texture. So I connect the color because here I can control the strength of my how uh, how my bump map looks. I'm going to show you in a minute. My normal map will be looking to, uh, in my object. So and now I get this normal and connect to my normal here. Boom. Right, Let me just get closer, and I know what I mean. Let me just remove this. Right, so I come here, my normal, and apply that. Look, did you see that? So if I make this, oh yeah, if I make this strength really strong, you can see what I mean by what the normal map does. So it's really powerful. This is really far to make objects look really realistic. Of course, this is a bit exaggerated, so I'm just going to do something like that. Strength 4.7, I don't know, you put the strength you want. Yeah. So if I render now, yeah, you can see that information of the texture in, uh, in our barrel. I don't really like that light at the top there, so it's too high here. So I'm just gonna, I'll move, change a little bit in a minute. So anyway, let's go back here. Now I'm gonna add one more texture, which is gonna be my roughness, because we've already worked with roughness before, so let's just do that. Because I have the texture anyway, I download it from uh, textures.com. You can download a certain amount of textures there for free. Some others you pay, uh, but we're not paying anything here. So I'm going to create another image texture. This one I actually don't need any normal map or any roughness map because we're, I'm just going to add the grayscale information into my roughness. So I'm just going to go here and get my roughness, metal roughness. Yeah, which and then I, I really it's not about the color, so I put here non color. I don't know if you can see my video here if it gets too small to you here. Uh, but yeah, I, here I put non color. It was it was sRGB. We want non color, and I want to connect this node to my roughness. Let's have a look. So if I remove here. You see, see how shiny everything is. So when I call it, uh, my add my roughness. So that grayscale image is telling my roughness node which areas are really not shiny, and the others that are more shiny. Right. So we don't want to see shiny bits where the the, the rust is. Yeah. So. Let's have a look, render. Yeah. I think I have too much light here, so let me just go back to my layout. But you get the idea. Right? So before I go back there, so what we have here, this is our shader, this is our end material, material output, this is our shader, these are our three textures, the color texture, the normal texture and the roughness texture and the normal texture needs a normal map node which I can control the level of uh, texture that appears on my normal texture, right? Okay, so if I go back to my um, layout mode, 
uh, I'm just gonna my backlight I'm just gonna do a little bit like that Let's just go And my key light, I might just need 800. Don't want too much color, too much brightness now. Okay, so let's just render the final one. This is not about the rendering, it's about texturing anyway, but I just wanted to show you this. Right, okay, it's good to put a ground as well, but we can do that later. Maybe I can give you this as a real challenge. Let's put the ground. So, okay. That's it for this video. You know how to apply texture using a UV map um, in our barrel. Okay, we're gonna have all the other UV map uh, tutorials, and I'm gonna show you the other barrel now, the wooden barrel, and we're gonna actually paint our using our UV map, and we're gonna paint our texture on our object. Okay. I see you later in the next video. Bye.